Yo, what's good, boys? It's your boy, Suspense, and this is episode two of Hip Hop Right Now, where we talk everything hip hop, everything that's going on. This is the spot, so sit back, relax, like, subscribe. If you guys are watching on your TV, your AirPods, if you're at the gym, this is the time. This is what's going on in hip hop right now. I'm your boy, Suspense. So without further ado, let's get into it, boys. All right, we got this new Playboy Cardi music video that he just announced. If you guys didn't know, one of Playboy Cardi's homies posted on Twitter saying he's bringing Cardi to the hood for the All Red music video. It was just speculation until Cardi confirmed it by posting it on his Instagram story, um, which is leading me to believe that we're going to get this project I Am Music a little bit sooner than we think i'm thinking it's dropping september 13th boys honestly take that for a grain of salt but this is why i think i am music is dropping on september 13th one it's a friday one it's friday the 13th that's cardi's vibe cardi's been the most active he's been on social media period right now i would say the last three months so it seems right also september 13th is playboy cardi's birthday Come on, Annie's shooting a music video for All Red. It's like, you're only shooting a music video if you're going to drop music, hopefully. I mean, he did drop some music videos this year, like, unofficially. And, and a lot of songs unofficially. But it feels like this is the time in the Billboard interview he did last week. He also said he is dropping new music and dropping the album at the end of the year. So this momentum only feels right. Cardi is fresh off his award from the Billboard Awards as well for the Artist of the Year Award, which I think is definitely well-deserved. So it's like all this momentum is leading right in that way. If you guys are not seeing, he's switching up his style. I feel like Cardi's smarter than we think. I feel like he's purposely switching up his style so people talk about him. And it's like all the marketing play to lean into the album. Like literally the fact that he wears a backward jersey or he's starting to wear different colors the last month or so that's literally like breaking the internet and that's that shows you how much power cardi has right there and i think that's why he does deserve the power player artist of the year award for 2024 because bro has really not dropped too much music. He's been featured. Everyone's been wanting him on features. He's been one of the most sought after people. But he's, he he hasn't dropped anything. But he, he still has the youth and the, the new generation on hold. What he's been able to do with Opium as well. With Ken Carson and kind of makes and, and Destroy Lonely. And, and being able to make those boss moves I think is super, super, super dope. Um, but leading back into the album, I think all this momentum, all this publicity, how active we've been seeing Playboy Cardi on social media lately, it's got to be dropping here soon. His birthday is on September 13th, so I'm thinking we're getting I Am Music September 13th. Then supposedly after he drops I Am Music, if you guys didn't know, we're going to be getting a project called Baby Boy. This is what he's saying. Um, the existence of this album was first mentioned in February 2023 during a FaceTime call with ASAP Bari stating, this is what Cardi said. He said, I'm trying to drop two of them back to back February and then a month after. Obviously, we didn't get it in February, but a lot of people have been talking about this. It was also confirmed by Little88 as well on Twitter just not too long ago. So all, all the roads are leading to Cardi dropping on September 13th. That's what I think. Let's cross our fingers. I think the all red snippet and the snippets that have been coming out are super fire. I would love to hear this new music. I would love to hear Cardi not just on a feature to hear like what he's been working on sonically, what he wants to do production-wise. Also with that baby uh, boy project, the, the one he's supposedly... Sp- going to drop right after I Am Music. That album is supposed to be a pop sound, similar to like I Love It, and it's supposed to be completely different than I Am Music, is what people are saying. That's speculation. 
which will be super fire because I just want to see where his head's at um, musically. And Cardi's, Cardi's the guy right now. So I want the album, man. Drop the album, Cardi. Drop in the comments if you want this album from Cardi, man. We need this. We need this. Drop it. Stop just dropping fit picks and drop the project. All right. Let's go. Next, we have some new Travis Scott interview that I want to get into and some cool moments that happen. But without further ado, I said we just talk about George Kondo, the guy he had a conversation with. So this Travis Scott interview, it was more of a, just a conversation with this guy named George Kondo than anything. If you guys don't know who George Kondo is, he's a 66-year-old artist, um, a legend, a painter, most notably known for his work he's done with Kanye West on My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy. He's the person that did the cover art on that. So Culture Mag did this this piece where they had George Kondo and Travis sit down and they just had a conversation. Two creatives in different spaces talking about being creatives, which I thought was super interesting. Two people that are super successful from different areas but coming together and like their worlds definitely have crossed in many different ways, but them just talking and culture mag just documented that conversation. And so some things that stood out to me that I thought were interesting. I'm just going to tell you guys right now. Um, Travis in this conversation, he mentioned that he really wants his fans and for people to know that he's not just an artist that he is a producer as well. He said, I started producing, making beats. I haven't stopped making beats for other artists and for myself. It's been important for me to get back into that and to remind people that that's my foundation. I remember working on my first mixtape ever. A lot of people didn't understand where I was trying to take things. And for me to be able to do that now at this level is ill. When I made the Fiend beat, I was like, yo, this is crazy. Being able to put forth the same energy since day one. First of all, let's talk about that beat fiend, man. Like, super fire. Like, one of the biggest songs of the last year. One of Cardi's biggest songs. From a production standpoint, amazing. And Car- uh, the evolution from Travis's old mixtapes and his old projects and knowing that he had a hand in all of his stuff and the evolution to fiend, I think he's just reflecting on it being like, Yo, man, this is this is absolutely crazy. Like, what I've been able to make and the impact I've been able to have, not just from an artist standpoint, from an artist and producer standpoint. And was be honest, that's the secret cheat code right there. Like Kanye, it's like when you can produce and you can lay the vocals and like write stuff and make dope music. Like that's where you really create a sound and you create a world and you're really able to innovate and I think we've seen it like with Days Before Rodeo that's the reason why that album was able to drop 10 years later and have so much success is because he he is a producer he has his ear to the sonics it's not just about the lyrics and the vocals and the flows it is it is there's a lot about that but the music is big and so being able to be a part of that process from the production standpoint, it really allows you to have so much more control. Like with this Utopia project, I don't know if you guys know, but he he produced like, I believe nine songs on that is what he produced. Um, and it was either completely Travis Scott on the production of those songs, or it was him having a hand in each one of those. But there was nine songs on there that he was he was credit for the full production on on Utopia which is a testament to that album's success and to even the uniqueness of that album. I think a lot of us, um, even me personally, when I first heard it, like there were some songs on there I didn't really understand, but it had to grow on me. Um, a lot of this is live performance type vibes. I think Travis is one of the best live performers and he's been able to capture that energy. So the way he creates music is different because he's able to have these crazy crowds and like get these reactions. So now he creates from a different standpoint. And to touch on that, um, Travis said, I've been working on music and stuff every day while he's been on tour. And he said, when I'm doing these stadiums because they're sold out, I can see the music for what it is. See, I think that's a, a pure example. It's like, 
him being a live performer and having so much success in that area and him just coming off this Europe tour and having all these sold out shows and him being a producer as well and able to have the control of the music and the sonics of the records. He's able to come off these stadium shows and see how a song like Fiend is working or just any of these 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 records like Hyena, like when he opened up with, when he comes out to Hyena, like to be honest, when I bumped that song in my car, I'm not really like, it's not my jam, but like when I heard that song live at SoFi Stadium completely sold out and he came out to Hyena, I was like, yo, this is crazy. Like I understood it. So I think Travis Scott sees something that we don't see. So it's like, it, he's just ahead of the time. So it was like, I didn't know like Hyena was going to be the one, but Travis did. Travis knew he's like, Travis knew he's like, yo, when I perform this live, I'm going to open up to this at SoFi. I'm gonna, this is going to be my opening one on all my tours, and he's going to pop out to that. Um, that's the power of being able to produce. That's the power of um, having control, wearing the hats. I think when you're coming up as an artist or anything in the game, as a content creator or anything, I think it's important to, to learn everything, learn how to shoot video, learn how to edit, learn how to do all these things, learn how to mix, learn how to master so you can have a piece on that to put your own uh, flair on it, to put your own style, which will make you unique. That's what makes you you is your own perspective, whether it's on music, whether it's on the world. You're, but when you, when you have the control of the production, man, the sound, the sonics, that's everything. I know I just rambled a little bit on that, but man, I love music. I'm passionate about this. Travis is definitely a goat. Y'all can say I'm glazing, but... Super fire. Also in this uh, interview, he said he's back in album mode. Um, he said he said he's going to be back in New York soon, and he's back in album mode. And like I said, he's been working on new music every day while he's on tour. And when he's been doing these stadium shows that have been sold out, he can see the music for what it is. So I feel like this new album might even have a, a whole different perspective than Utopia. I feel like it's coming sooner than we think. Also, that was the highest grossing rap tour of all time. Travis Scott with over $215 million made. That's what it's expected. Crazy, man. Crazy. Well-deserved. One of the best live performers of our generation. And he's dropping music to go tour. So let's keep it running. All right, guys. Future new project, if you guys didn't know, we have Mixtape Pluto and a new snippet called South of France with Travis Scott, which is sounding fire. Always got to love some new, new future. The Mixtape Pluto was actually first announced and confirmed by Southside in an, interv in an interview with XXL where he states that he is working on Mixtape Pluto with Future right now. On September 2nd, 2024, a pre-save link for the Mixtape Pluto was uploaded to Sony Music's website for the caption about to drop, leading to the speculation that it would drop the following Friday. The track list is unconfirmed and it's compiled of recent singles and snippets, song titles, sources, so, yeah, boys, I'm just reading you guys a little bit of the update that we have for this new Future album. It's coming. I think it's coming sooner than we think. We did just get a snippet, Travis Scott and Future song called South of France with a music video. Travis, man, he just, bro's just everywhere right now. I'm excited. I, I love me some Future. Definitely in my top five. Let's go, baby. That's all I got for you guys right now, but I will keep you guys posted. Stay, stay tuned in. Stay tapped in with me, even on my short form content and all my social medias. That's where I'll be doing like quick updates. These are going to be a little bit more long form videos where I'm just chopping it up with you guys, giving my opinion, some stuff where you guys could just sit down after you're off work or while you're at the gym or you're just chilling just to get updated on hip hop. These are what these videos are going to be for. But to stay tuned, make sure you guys are following me on all the social media stuff for the new news. All right, boys, now we have a little Yachty interview with V Man, V Magazine. Um, some cool stuff in here. Yachty is a little bit more out there right now um, as far as like doing press. And no, when's the last interview? Yeah, he has because bro has a podcast. So I feel like we get a lot from him, but I feel he's just someone that we can learn from. He's on such a crazy run right now that. I feel like his perspective on the game is super important. So when Yachty 
has something to say or sits down and do an interview, I like to I like to look into it. So here are some key takeaways that I took from the interview. They touched on creative process and talked about Yachty. They asked Yachty about his creative process and like how he finds inspiration. And I thought it was interesting on what he said. He said, I'm just on the internet. I'm outside. I watch mu- movies. You just have to live. I find ideas by just living life and indulging in all life has to offer, good and bad. Um, I feel that's super important for artists out there. Like, we do forget that we just have to like we get outside at times to be creative. Um, watching movies, take inspiration from other spots. It's not just going to come. Sometimes you have to like grab things and take inspiration. So that's a little bit of his creative process. They asked him some of his most inspiring places. And he said it's either between Tokyo or New York when it comes to fashion. But if he's talking inspiration in general, probably Tokyo or places like Switzerland. Um somewhere with just really good scenery or peaceful vibes. The reason why I thought that was interesting is because when you're an artist and you're a creative, it's all about the vibe, man. Benny Blanco said in an interview, Benny Blanco's a legend with all the hits that he's been a part of and records he's been involved with. He said, these hit records didn't come from me being such a good producer it came from this room it came from the vibe the energy that you have in the room and like not to be all hippie or whatever but it is true you know and sometimes you can take energy from different ways or a room can be dead and it can't inspire you anymore and when you're when you are creative and when you're trying to make a living as a creative and you're trying to do something very innovative and like really do something crazy and inspire people it's important to switch up your environment man like even just going new places, even for me when I travel and I like see a different culture, you have so much inspiration, you have life, you have trials, you have errors, uh, um, things that you've just gone through that just give you substance, give you experience, show you what the good is. So man, if you're if you're feeling stuck, even if you don't have money, man, just go live, like go on, even get outside, going on a walk, talking to someone you haven't, like experiencing something, saying yes to situations. I think that's super, super important. And that's kind of what Yachty's saying. He didn't he didn't really break it down as deep as I did right there, but it's mad important. Someone that does a really cool job at that, that actually I wanted to do this. It'd be so cool to do this, man. If you guys know who Mike is, formerly known as Mike Stud, Mike, super fire. If you guys are not tuned in with him, he has super fire music. Albums I recommend are the highs and the lows. Super vibey, man. If you just want some like good vibes, super vibes but one thing that he does is he's a super creative so at times in his life he gets creatively stumped so he moves from different places to different places so for example it's like he had this house in Malibu and he was there for like three months and he was he set up his studio in the biggest room in like the in the living room or the biggest room with the best view or the the thing that inspired him the most he would set up his studio right there and he would just create music from this window, from this view, from this place that inspired him. And once he got uninspired, he would leave that Airbnb and he would go to a different Airbnb. And then he would be there for two months or three months. And maybe it was in Nashville or in this place overlooking this river or something like that. But he understood how important that is. And even in this documentary he did, he's like, man, his music has changed completely by doing that and like being able to catch these vibes. Um, so go catch a vibe, man. Even if it's like taking your studio in the car or something and driving to the sunset, man, go catch a vibe, make something dope. I think that's super interesting to hear artists creative process, because if you're a fan of music and you, and you love this music, it's like, well, that's where it came from. That's like, they had to plant some seed and like water it. And that's their way of watering it to make something beautiful. It's like their creative process allows this art to be beautiful. You know, the way that they move in life, you know, um, something that even MGK said, he's like, or artists even say, and artists do this, but MGK said in an interview, he said something along the lines that he puts himself through misery at times in life because it gives him better stuff to write about. And it's almost like this subconscious thing that he does as an artist. He like self-sabotages himself so he can feel something. Um, Very unique, very unique. Artists are crazy, music is crazy, it's beautiful, especially when it stems from a real place. So I'm excited. 
for some new Lil Yachty music. I'm excited to hear that he's inspired, that he goes to different places. Lil Yachty has been on a crazy, crazy run right now. So certain creative processes like this, I think, are super important to to know and to take in and understand. Um, Yachty's killing it right now. Every single month he's been in something, not every month, every week for the last six months, he's been in the midst of something, whether it's Concrete Boys and him putting on a whole new crew, whether it's him having his ear to the streets with Ian, whether it's him, the feature with Lil Wayne, the Lil Mega Minion, Lyrical Lemonade uh, collab, like, bros in the cut right now, mad respect, Yachty, generational run, gotta give homies their flowers when they hear, straight up. All right, boys. I think the last thing I'm gonna I'm gonna touch on today is I'm just gonna scroll through some last minute stuff on online and see if we have any new hip hop updates for you guys. Some stuff that I maybe missed that you guys want to know about. Um, like Drake just link, linked up with Trippy Red. If you guys didn't know, uh, Trippy Red was supposed to be on God's Plan um, with Drake. Also, uh, it was six years ago today, guys, that Mac Miller passed away. He passed away on September 7th, 2018. Rest in peace to Mac, man. Definitely one of the GOATs, inspired me in so many different ways. That was one of the hardest ones for me personally. Um, when an artist passed away, him and Juice, rest in peace, Mac, some legends. Actually, in honor of that, I'm going to throw some, I'm going to throw some Mac on the playlist today. On, on the Hip Hop Right Now playlist by Suspense. I'm going to throw three Mac songs in there for this week um, that I'm just like, that are just my favorite Mac Miller songs of all time. Um, just because it's like, we got to, bro. Shout out Mac. Go. All right, what do we got? Also, Big Sean and The Alchemist uh, announced that they have a new album coming soon, which I think is cool, man. Big Sean kind of been on his on his tip lately. He's been... He's been dropping a lot more music. It was a little sad to see his album sales. They were a little bit lower than I, um, what I thought. I think he was expected to sell like, uh, what was it, like 30K or something like that. Let's see, Big Sean album sales. I'm looking it up right now, boys. Which, yeah, man. He was projected to sell 24K first week. And like, ooh, that's not good. Destroy Lonely sold more. Than Big Sean, I believe Destroy Lonely uh, sold thirty thousand first week. It's crazy because Big Sean, you have to think about it. And like when I have conversations with homies and we have rap conversations and stuff like that, and we talk about back in the day and even two thousand fifteen in these eras and like who we respected as being like the like in that conversation, you know, Big Sean often gets thrown in there. It's not like he's in that conversation a ton, but he definitely is someone that get mentioned. So for someone to be that at high tier of rapping and in that conversation for him to only sell like 25k 20k is kind of crazy especially when you have someone like destroy selling 30,000 but at the end of the day bro Sean the album was actually I didn't listen to all of it but from what I listened to it's fire um some of the songs like it's not like he did not make in like club records or anything like that but I don't know what's this I don't know what the disconnect is man I don't know if he's trying to be too introspective with the songs and making people think too much, I think you can do that, but it needs to be done super well and artistic. And I think Kendrick does a really good job at that, and he like owns that space in a sense. Like To Pimp a Butterfly, that was super introspective, and it had all those records that made you think, think, but like the way it was packaged from start to finish and the and the journey it took you on, the body of work was just amazing. I feel like if if Big Sean's gonna be going in that introspective, like that type of way, the body of work, like it's gotta have these skits and this art form about it in this world, you know? But hey man, I don't know what the disconnect is. I'm gonna go listen to the whole album though, you know, and actually like give it a full run through and a listen, boys. That's what we're gonna do. All right, guys. Also, Lil Tecca has been on a crazy run. We just need to be shout out Lil Tecca. I could go on a Lil Tecca like glazing moment right here because Loki Lil Tecca, one of the most 
underrated in the game, like 22 years old. Like the record he just dropped, bad time, completely fire. Taste was fire. He's literally does not miss. He stays out of beef. When do we see Tekka getting caught up in any beef like that? 22 years old. At the at he's the highest selling rap artist under the age of 21 years old ever. Bro's not in beef. He's not in these like he's not. It's for the music, man. It's literally, he's popping because of his music. Super fire, super young. For me, I think Tekka's one of my favorite artists in the game, period. I have that written down on here. I just wanted to like touch on Lil Tekka's crazy run that he's just been on. And I feel like he doesn't get as much love as he deserves. Obviously, the bro's rich and he's living his life and da da da. But as far as just music and like what he makes, the music he makes and stuff like that, I feel like he's left out of some conversations, man. Like, don't get me wrong. He's successful. He's streaming. But he gets left out in some conversations. A lot of people that came up at that same time Tekka did, they're not doing tours like Tekka. They're not streaming like Tekka. They don't have the motion like Tekka. Like, the, the last tour Tekka just went on, he headlined that, see, that sucker, you know? So, I think that's something to notice. Stay tuned. I want to see a new album from Tekka here soon. I'm going to keep you guys posted. But there you guys have it. Anything that's going on in hip-hop right now, that's what I'm covering. Anything that's hot, anything that's worth talking about, that's what we're doing here on these episodes. I'm your boy, Suspense. Tap in, man. Tap into the social medias. Um, follow your boy. Stay tuned. Stay up to date. The Hip Hop Right Now playlist is live. I will put it right here so you guys can see it. There will be links below as well so you can tap in easy. Anytime I find a new banger, I throw it in that playlist right there. Like and subscribe on the channel if you guys like the videos. If you guys are vibing with your boy, let's try to get this to 1,000 likes. Let's get this video to 1,000 likes. Love you guys. I appreciate you guys tuning in. This was episode two of Hip Hop Right Now with your boy Suspense. If you didn't know, now you know.